All right, let's uh, let's dive deep into a true aviation legend, the Superman Spitfire. Yeah, we're going to cover its entire journey. You know, from from the drawing board to its status today. Yeah, as a global icon, but uh, focusing mainly on its role in the Battle of Britain. You're <laughs> you're pretty interested in, in getting a sense of how it was engineered. You know all the brilliance that went into it and how it stacked up against its rivals during the war, right? Oh, absolutely. The Spitfire is fascinating because it's more than just nuts and bolts, you know. It really captured the imagination of a, a nation, of the world, really. Exactly. So mm -hmm. let's uh, let's start at the beginning with its design. I yeah. mean, you look at this plane, it's almost too beautiful to to be a war machine. It's got these sleek lines, the, the elliptical wings. Who who was the mastermind behind this uh, this masterpiece? That would be R.J. Mitchell, a brilliant engineer, aeronautical engineer. He actually got his start designing racing seaplanes. Um, and this background is, is really crucial mm -hmm. because it gave him a, a deep understanding of aerodynamics, speed, agility, all of which he poured into the Spitfire. Yeah, those early racing planes must have been pretty nimble too. So how did that racing experience translate into the Spitfire's iconic design. Specifically, what's the deal with those elliptical wings? I know they're they're gorgeous to look at, but were they actually functional? They were both beautiful and defunctional. Mitchell's elliptical wing design was revolutionary for the time. See, most wings back then were straight, um, and that created a lot of drag. But that elliptical shape, that reduced drag significantly, allowed the Spitfire to to achieve both superior speed and maneuverability. You know, it's like the difference between a, a clunky barge and a sleek speedboat. Okay, so the wings were about more than just looking good. They actually gave the Spitfire a serious performance edge over, over its competitors. But uh, wings alone don't win battles, do they? Tell me about the engine, the heart of this beast. Ah, ugh. The Rolls-Royce Merlin engine practically synonymous with the Spitfire, and for good reason. Now, most people know that it was a powerful engine. Um, but what's fascinating is how that power was achieved. The Merlin utilized a unique combination of a supercharger and an innovative cooling system, which allowed it to generate an incredible amount of horsepower without overheating. So it wasn't just raw power. It was smart engineering that made the Merlin so special. Yeah. Did, did that translate into any specific advantages for the pilots? Absolutely. Uh, the Merlin's performance, especially at higher altitudes, gave Spitfire pilots a, a crucial edge. Think of it this way. Imagine two boxers, one with a powerful punch but gets winded quickly, the other with a slightly weaker punch but endless stamina. The Spitfire was the second boxer, able to maintain its performance at heights where enemy aircraft would struggle. I see. I see. I'm starting to see why they paired this engine with such a refined aerodynamic design. It's like they gave a, a world-class athlete a supercharged engine. Now let's shift our focus to the Battle of Britain. We know the Spitfire played a crucial role in defending Britain against the Luftwaffe, but I'm curious how it compared to its RAF stablemate, the Hawker Hurricane. They were both vital, but were they interchangeable or did each have its own specialty? That's a great question. It's, it's important to understand that while both the Hurricane and the Spitfire were crucial to the RAF's success, um, that they had very distinct roles. The Hurricane, though dependable and robust, hmm. was primarily designed for intercepting bombers and ground attack missions. It was the workhorse of the RAF. The Spitfire, on the other hand, with its speed and maneuverability, was the perfect weapon for those intense close quarters dogfights against enemy fighters so it's kind of like a tag game, each plane playing to its strengths. But let's uh, let's zero in on those dogfights for a second. I think many of us imagine them as these graceful aerial ballets, but but I have a feeling the reality was far more raw and intense. Paint a picture for me. What was it like to be in a Spitfire dogfight? You're right. It was anything but graceful. Dogfights were brutal, high speed, high altitude battles. Imagine yourself crammed into this tiny cockpit, the roar of the Merlin engine vibrating through you, G forces pulling at your body as you twist and turn, desperately trying to get a shot at your opponent before they get you. It was a deadly dance of speed, skill, and sheer nerve. Sounds utterly terrifying. I imagine that that unique elliptical wing design we talked about played a huge role in those close quarters battles. Did it, did it give the Spitfire an advantage? Absolutely. That elliptical wing, with its incredible lift and low drag, yeah. allowed Spitfire pilots to make incredibly tight turns and climb at phenomenal rates. It was crucial for those split-second decisions. That meant the difference between victory and becoming a burning wreck. It's almost like they were playing a deadly game of chess. Up there, except at hundreds of miles per hour. Now, within the Battle of Britain, there's a specific date that stands out, September 11th, 1940. 
Uh, this was one of the major days of the battle. What made it so significant and what role did the Spitfire play? September 11th was a turning point in the Battle of Britain. The Luftwaffe launched a massive attack, aiming to cripple the RAF and pave the way for a possible invasion. However, the RAF, bolstered by the effectiveness of the Spitfire, put up a fierce resistance and inflicted heavy losses on the Luftwaffe. It was a day of intense air battles, with Spitfires playing a crucial role in breaking up German formations and protecting key RAF airfields. The success on that day demonstrated that the RAF could hold its own against the Luftwaffe's might. Yeah, it really showed that they weren't going to be easily defeated. So it was a major victory, and the Spitfire was right in the thick of it. But it wasn't just about the numbers, was it? There's this sense that the Spitfire symbolized something much deeper for the British people. It became more than just a machine, you know? Right. Exactly. The Spitfire became a symbol of hope, of defiance. It represented the courage and determination of those RAF pilots who were risking their lives every single day to defend their homeland against, you know, a seemingly unstoppable enemy at the time. It's like the Spitfire captured the spirit of the Blitz, that, mm -hmm. that refusal to give up mm. in the face of overwhelming odds. But uh, the Spitfire story didn't end with the Battle of Britain, did it? It was a constant work in progress, always evolving to meet new challenges. You're absolutely right. The Spitfire wasn't a static design, you know. It was constantly being refined and improved throughout the war. In fact, over 24 different mark or variants mm. of the Spitfire were produced. Yeah, wow, 24 different versions. That's incredible. It seems like they were always pushing the boundaries of what was possible with the technology at the time or some of the most significant upgrades and, and what, what drove this constant evolution. Well, for one thing, the Luftwaffe wasn't sitting still either. They were constantly introducing newer, more advanced aircraft. Like the Focke-Wulf Fev 190 which we, we touched on earlier, the Spitfire had to evolve to counter these threats and, and maintain its edge in the air. It was like an aerial arms race with both sides mm -hmm. trying to outdo each other. Yeah. Give me some specifics. What were some of the key advancements that transformed the Spitfire over time? Take the Mark V, for example. Introduced in 1941, it became the most produced Spitfire variant. It featured a more powerful Merlin engine, um, which gave it a significant boost in speed and climb rate, especially at higher altitudes. It also had improved armament, including the option for two cannons, which packed a serious punch. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine what it must have been like for a Luftwaffe pilot to suddenly find themselves facing a Spitfire with cannons. Yeah. But the evolution didn't stop there, did it? Not even close. The Mark IX followed, incorporating design changes that further enhanced its performance. Uh, notably, it featured a revised wing design that improved its handling and allowed for even more fuel capacity, extending its range. So it was becoming faster, more heavily armed, and it could fly farther. What's not to love? But wasn't there a point where they pushed the design as far as it could go? With the Merlin engine, didn't they eventually have to look for something even more powerful? You're on the right track. Yeah. Enter the Mark IV Baith. Oh. A true beast of a machine. This variant featured the monstrously powerful Rolls-Royce Griffin engine, known for its raw power. The Griffin engine. I've heard those things were absolute powerhouses. How did that change the Spitfire's personality? It transformed it into a high-speed interceptor capable of exceeding 450 miles per hour, making it one of the fastest piston engine aircraft ever built. Imagine the sound of that Griffin engine roaring as a Mark IV-8 screamed past an enemy formation. It must have been a sight to behold and a terrifying experience for anyone on the receiving end of its firepower. Yeah, it sounds like they turned the Spitfire into a true speed demon. But with all these upgrades, the extra weight, the more powerful engine, didn't it lose some of its original agility? That nimbleness that made it so famous in those early dogfights. That's a great observation. It's true that some of the later Marks, like the Mark IV Thieve, were heavier and perhaps not quite as maneuverable as their predecessors. However, they they retained the essential design principles. That made the Spitfire such a formidable opponent in the first place. Think of it as a champion boxer moving up in weight class. They may not be as quick on their feet, but they pack a much harder punch. So it was a trade-off, gaining power and speed while still maintaining those core qualities. That made it a legend. But we've been focusing a lot on the European theater. Wasn't the Spitfire also a bit of a globetrotter? Seeing action in other parts of the world. Tell me about its roles beyond the Battle of Britain. You're right. While its role in the Battle of Britain is iconic, the Spitfire served in various theaters throughout World War II. It saw action in the Mediterranean, North Africa, and even the Pacific, supporting Allied forces in diverse capacities. So it wasn't just a European champion. It was a global player. What were some of the specific roles it took on in these other theaters? Did they have to modify the design at all for different 
environments or missions? Mm. It was incredibly versatile, from escorting bombers to providing close air support for ground troops to reconnaissance missions. The Spitfire did it all, and yes, they absolutely modified it for specific roles. One of the most interesting adaptations was the development of carrier-based Spitfires. Wait, hold on. Carrier-based Spitfires. So they took this graceful land-based fighter and put it on a ship. How did that work out? It was a bold move, considering the challenges of operating from carriers, like shorter takeoff distances, and the need for robust landing gear. But the Spitfire's adaptability shone through once again. They strengthened the airframe, added folding wings to save space on the cramped carrier decks, and even equipped some variants with arrestor hooks for those tricky carrier landings. It's amazing how they managed to adapt this iconic aircraft for such a different environment. It really highlights the Spitfire's flexibility and the ingenuity of the engineers who worked on it. But beyond its technical brilliance, the Spitfire seems to have captured something in the public imagination. It became more than just a warplane, didn't it? It became a symbol. Absolutely. The Spitfire's sleek design, its remarkable performance, and its association with the heroic defense of Britain. During its darkest hour, all contributed to its transformation into a cultural icon. It embodied the spirit of resilience, courage and innovation that defined the British war effort. And that legacy seems to have endured long after the war ended. I mean, you still see Spitfires at air shows, ridiculously restored, their Merlin engines roaring, drawing huge crowds. What do you think it is about this aircraft that continues to captivate people, even all these years later? I think it's because the Spitfire represents something more than just a machine. It symbolizes the triumph of the human spirit over adversity, a reminder of the courage and sacrifice of those who flew it, and the innovative brilliance of its designers. It's a powerful image, this sleek, almost mythical creature soaring through the skies, defending freedom against tyranny. And it seems like that image has resonated across generations. But as we wrap up this part of our deep dive, I'm curious to explore how this legacy has been preserved and how the Spitfire story continues to be told today. Well, that's a perfect segue into our next segment, where we'll delve into the Spitfire's enduring legacy, its impact on popular culture, and its continued relevance in today's world. So we've talked about the Spitfire's design you know, its role in the war, even how it evolved over time. But like you were saying, it's become so much more than just a historical artifact. W what are some of the ways its story is being kept alive today? Well, for starters, there are still a number of airworthy Spitfires around the world, many of them meticulously restored by dedicated enthusiasts and organizations. Seeing one of these magnificent machines take to the skies at an air show Hearing that Merlin engine roar, it's its a truly visceral experience that, that connects you to the past in a very powerful way. Yeah, it's like a living piece of history, you know, yeah. breathing and soaring right before your eyes. I, I can only imagine how emotional it must be to witness that. It truly is. And beyond the airworthy examples, there are countless Spitfires preserved in museums around the world each one a testament to its legacy. These museums do a fantastic job of not just displaying the aircraft themselves, but also telling the stories of the people who designed them, built them, and flew them. It's like each Spitfire has its own story to tell, each one a piece of the larger tapestry of history. What are some of the standout museums or collections for someone who's really keen on diving deeper into the Spitfire's world? Well, if you're ever in the UK, the Imperial War Museum Duxford is a must visit. They have an incredible collection of Spitfires on display, including several rare variants. And then there's the RAF Museum, Cosford, which houses a beautifully restored Markoft Spitfire, the very same aircraft that flew in the Battle of Britain. Those sound like pilgrimages any Spitfire enthusiast would want to make. But it's not just museums, right? The Spitfire seems to have seeped into popular culture as well. I mean, you see it in movies, documentaries, even on t-shirts and coffee mugs. Why do you think its image remains so potent, even all these years later? It's more than just a cool looking airplane. It's become a symbol, an icon. And I think its image resonates so strongly because it represents those core values that people admire. Courage, resilience, the triumph of good over evil. Plus it's undeniably a beautiful machine. That sleek design, those elliptical wings, it's just aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, it's like the Spitfire transcended its original purpose as a weapon and became a symbol of hope and inspiration. And that symbol seems to have resonated across generations. Do you think the Spitfire still has something to teach us today, or is it purely a relic of the past? I think its story is timeless. The Spitfire reminds us that even when facing seemingly insurmountable challenges, human ingenuity, determination, and courage can prevail. 
It's a message that's as relevant today as it was back then. It's a reminder that sometimes the underdog can win, that innovation can overcome brute force, and that even in the darkest of times, there's always hope. Well, as we wrap up our deep dive into the world of the Supermarine Spitfire, I'm left wondering, was the one thing you hope our listener takes away from this conversation? I hope they come away with an appreciation for the Spitfire's impact, not just as a war machine, but as a symbol of human ingenuity and the indomitable spirit that defines us. Beautifully put, the Spitfire story is ultimately a story about people, the brilliant minds who designed it, the brave souls who flew it, and those who continue to keep its legacy alive today. And that's a legacy worth preserving and sharing with future generations. Absolutely. So to our listener, we encourage you to continue exploring the fascinating world of the Spitfire. Dive deeper into its history, visit the museums, watch the documentaries, and if you ever have the chance, witness one of these magnificent machines take to the skies, you won't be disappointed. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. It was a pleasure.